the Atacama Desert. It's home to 66 different radio telescopes. But despite being the home of so many different scientific operations, it's also home to many riddles, both natural and man-made. Enigmas like its famous glyphs and these weird tiny baby alien-esque skeletons that are definitely not aliens. More on that topic in a future episode, though. It's also the setting of my most disturbing Call of Cthulhu scenario, coming to the Miskatonic Repository sometime next year. But it's also littered with mysterious mangled emerald and charcoal-colored glass shards. Glass shards that up until now have been a total mystery. Now, a new analysis of those glass shards has revealed that they may have been formed from an ancient cometary explosion. Let's jump in. But first, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, join the mailing list, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Mind's Horizon, and this is Science Get. Scientific analysis of the mangled shards of black and green glass that can be found coating parts of the Atacama Desert has revealed a potential solution to a mystery spanning all of recorded history. The most likely culprit is an exploding comet. But don't you dare leave just yet, as the mechanics behind the glass's formation will leave you stunned. Unlike asteroid impacts, there is little evidence for cometary impacts on Earth. And I'm talking about the Earth's entire geological history, not just recently. That may come as a surprise to some of you, but it's the truth. The reason for that is because most comets, much like smaller asteroids, just explode once they reach a certain point in our atmosphere. While exploding asteroids are typically called bolides, the cometary equivalent is classified as an airburst. These airbursts usually leave little in the way of evidence, at least none that can stand the test of time like the some odd 190 impact craters that are scattered across the Earth's surface. Even the Chicxulub asteroid that ended the reign of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, which was once thought to have been caused by a massive comet, has recently been reclassified as having been caused by a carbonaceous asteroid from the outer reaches of the asteroid belt. Now, you might be saying, but Eric, Mars is covered by hundreds of thousands of impact craters. Shouldn't the Earth have far more than 200 craters? And you'd be right, Earth likely gets pelted by the same number of asteroids and comets as any other body in the solar system, so it would stand to reason that Earth would be riddled with craters. But that isn't the case, and the reason for that is our complex weather systems that erode the evidence of these craters quite rapidly. And this is especially true of comets. Now, originally, when scientists first puzzled over the glass shards that littered the Atacama, it was suggested that they could have been formed by grass fires, which would have heated the dry sands enough to form glass. At first glance, this makes a bit of sense. After all, the Atacama is the driest desert on our fair blue planet. But the trouble with this explanation is that even 12,000 years in Earth's past, there probably wouldn't have been enough grass to account for all that glass. See what I did there? This, among many other factors, suggests that the glass shards in the Atacama Desert may be the best proof yet for one such cometary impact. To better understand these mechanics, however, we need to take a look at NASA's Stardust mission, which laid the groundwork for the solution to this mystery. NASA's Stardust mission was designed to sample and return cometary material from Comet Wild 2 for scientists to study back here on Earth, and in 2004 that is exactly what it did. Stardust was able to accomplish this feat by collecting the dust from the dust surrounding the comet in Aerogel. Aerogel is freaking awesome, but it's a little difficult to describe. It's one of the lightest known materials on Earth. Most commonly, it's made from silica. It is so light that if you were to hold some yourself, you'd barely even know that it was there because over 99% of the substance is composed of air. The stuff is an incredibly good insulator, and because of its structure, the best way to describe it is sponge-like. We could probably spend a whole episode describing this stuff. So suffice it to say, it's awesome. And it's how Stardust was able to collect the comet's material from the cloud of dust that surrounded it while it was moving at an incredible speed of 46,000 kilometers per hour, 28,583 miles per hour. We had to wait two years for the spacecraft's return capsule to make it back to good old terra firma. Dust samples from Comet Wild 2 spread all over the globe, ending up in the hands of 150 different scientists. Those samples revealed quite a few surprises. For one, seven of the particles that Stardust had collected are thought to have been sourced from supernovae in the solar system's distant past. 
Following this, seven different papers were published in the journal Science, which dove into the analysis of the dust samples. Results showed that Comet Wild 2 is composed of a lot of organic compounds in its dust, including nitrogen and aliphatic hydrocarbons, which are biologically stable. Amorphous and crystalline silicates were also plentiful in the aerogel samples. The samples also contained a limited amount of pure carbon and methylamine, which is used to make meth here on Earth, thanks Walter White, as well as ethylamine. But these organic compounds have not been associated with any particular particles. See what I did there? In addition to this, glycine was also found in the samples, though initially it was thought that this could have been due to contamination from Earth. But as a side note, we've since discovered glycine on another comet. All of this leads us to discuss what was uncovered in the glass debris of the Atacama. On November 2nd of this year, Peter H. Schultz and his co-authors published a paper on the origins of the Atacama's mysterious glass fragments in the scientific journal Geology. The paper's abstract reveals that the twisted and folded silicate glasses up to 50 centimeters across concentrated in certain areas across the Atacama Desert near Paica, northern Chile, indicate nearly simultaneous seconds to minutes intense air bursts close to the Earth's surface near the end of the Pleistocene. When the glass fragments were analyzed, researchers discovered traces of elements discovered in the Stardust mission we just talked about. The paper further notes that every sample examined thus far contained thousands of exotic mineral grains and rock fragments atypical of the local sediments. Particles of note discovered during the analysis was the presence of triolite, cubonite, and calcium aluminum rich inclusions in the sample glass. All of these were present in the aerogel used by Stardust. Study co-author Scott Harris had this to say about the discovery. Those minerals are what tell us that this object has all the makings of a comet. To have the same mineralogy we saw in the Stardust samples and trained in these glasses is really powerful evidence that what we're seeing is the result of a cometary airburst. The comet in question would have entered Earth's atmosphere nearly 12,000 years ago before it exploded, leaving these glittering glass mementos behind for us to find. As many of you know, the Chelyabinsk meteor explosion over Russia is the most powerful explosion to be caused by an asteroid entering the Earth's atmosphere since the Tunguska event in 1908. Both of those events have something in common with airbursts associated with cometary impacts, however. And that is, if either of them had not been witnessed, they likely would not have left enough evidence to stand the test of time. This is not the case with the Atacama, though. The presence of glass shards littering the desert tells us a lot about how they could have been formed, and we can start with the extreme temperatures that likely formed them. Upon examining the glass fragments in the Atacama, researchers determined that the comet that exploded over it 12,000 years ago would have reached a temperature of 1700 degrees Celsius, 3092 degrees Fahrenheit, to form them. The glass fragments are also twisted. This is easily explained by an airburst, as Schultz goes on to explain. It was clear the glass had been thrown around and rolled. It was basically kneaded like bread. Am I the only one who wants a pretzel right now? Grass fires would never reach a temperature of 1700 degrees Celsius, 3092 degrees Fahrenheit, and they definitely would not have caused the glass to be, as Schultz put it, thrown around and rolled, kneaded like bread. But what's intriguing about the timing of the airburst is that it's about 800 years after a period of rapid cooling, a period known as the Younger Dryas event. This event is linked to the disappearance of many large animals like giant sloths, mastodons, and saber-toothed cats. And what's even more interesting is that there is a contentious theory that a comet exploding over the northern hemisphere may have caused it. While the Atacama cometary airburst, say that five times fast, is not at all linked to the cause of the Younger Dryas event, because that's not how time works, it does show that events like this do happen, and furthermore, the work done on the glass shards may pave the way to discovering other cometary impact sites around the world, which is very exciting. But what would that airburst have looked like for anyone unlucky enough to look up in the area 12,000 years ago? Well, according to Schultz, it would have seemed like the entire horizon was on fire, Fire. If you weren't religious before, you would be after. Yikes. If you dug this content, be sure to do the things and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, etc, etc. And hey, if you dig asteroids and comets, check out this video on how we figured out what type of object killed the dinosaurs. And wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time. Am I the only one who wants a pretzel right now? Just me?